Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I'm finally back, ready to do recorded videos again. After a couple weeks within a month, the last time I did a movie review was Jurassic World Dominion, which was the latest sequel in the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World film franchise, where this time we get to have the original main cast from Jurassic Park teaming up with the main cast of Jurassic World as they begin to stop all these bad scientists, you know, stealing all the DNA examples and all that from Biosyn and they get to help out all the dinosaurs even though they're going to start attacking humans and all. So they're going to try to save them and save everyone from a uh, an illegal activity that that these scientists are coming up with. Yeah, and I thought it was, uh, in, in my opinion, I thought it was a great sequel. I mean, not as excellent as the original Jurassic Park, along with its second movie, The Lost World Jurassic Park, as opposed to Jurassic World, along with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But at least it's better than Jurassic Park 3, that's for sure. In fact, any of the other films as we follow are better than Jurassic Park 3. That's for sure. But hey, I know we had to go for that argument, or I had to go for that argument too. <laughs> okay. Well, the reason why I haven't done any movie reviews uh, throughout the course of the month, I was mostly posting commercial breaks that I found online as usual, trying to keep up with the channel. Is because you know I had to do a lot of errands. I was so busy. Um, we had to help uh, our cousin Opa Myra Neri find a new place because you know for a while she has to stay uh, with her friend uh, before she ends up you know staying at a local a local motel um, just so she can be able to find and search uh, a new place to live because it wasn't easy. I mean, it was very expensive for many places around. So some of them were not available yet until now. And also because she just lost um, two of her dogs. I mean, she has three dogs, but now she has just one. So luckily one is, is still with us and still alive, but the other two she had for a very long time. And they, they had a medical condition. She had to take them to the vets uh, for a couple months, hoping that they'll feel better, hoping they'll, they'll perform surgery and everything. But it just didn't seem to work out as, a, as they planned. And, and to make matters worse, even though they had fixed them up and everything, um, they were dying. And it was really sad. Uh, I felt bad for her, we all did. And it's a shame that now she has only one dog left to, to take care of. But I'm happy that she finally got a new place that she's been waiting for. And now she can finally take care of her dog and take care of herself. You know, everything that she needs, that she wants. And we're helping her out to buying everything that she wants. But I know she's going to buy something on her own as well because you know, she does have a job. You know, she's working as hard. And let's hope for the best for her. I mean, it's, it's been pretty difficult for the past uh, couple years. Yeah. But I know my family's been going through hard times too. That's always the case. Um, we did, however, went to see some movies uh, during the summer. Um, I, I will review them later. I'm just going to try to review some other title that I'm going to choose um, this week. Uh, but I did want to see movies like Top Gun Maverick. I finally got to see that. It's one of the best Top Gun sequels that we've been waiting for for the past 36 years. And I couldn't believe it. You know, Tom has uh, never been better. But it was great to see him you know, reprising his role as Maverick. Now that he's 60 years old, I mean, he's still looking great. Keep that in mind, though. I mean, that movie was shot uh, a couple years back, you know, 
because of the pandemic, you know, they had to put it on the shelf for a while. But luckily, you know, he still looks great. Uh, there was a lot of amazing scenes here. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that later um, when I get a chance to review it. Um, and I also went to see Four Love and Thunder. I really enjoyed the sequel. I I haven't seen a four movie in quite a long time now since the last one in 2017 in theaters. So it's great that we finally got one. I've been waiting for that too. I mean, it was nice to see Chris Hemsworth reprising his role after the Avengers uh, Endgame. Yeah, so now he's finally back. I mean, he had been working with the team of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> So it's nice to see those guys again. That's cool. Um, but this time we finally got uh, Natalie Portman to reprise her role as uh, Dr. Jane Foster. So it's really cool. And yeah, I think you already saw the surprise that she, you know, she was going to become <laughs> the, the almighty for the way he was. So he's... <laughs> yeah, it, it's just fun. Um, but it has a great cast to join in, too. we got Tessa Thompson back again. And we got um, Taka yeah, talk Watatiti. I think that's it. Yeah, talk, yeah Taka Watatiti. He's back. He's also directed the film, too. So, as Korg. And <laughs> it was fun. It really was. Um, and I did watch some movies um, on streaming as well as on 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD recently. So I know it's going to be hard to keep up with a lot of things, but I'm going to do it throughout the summer because, you know, now that we're in August, it's going to be tough. <laughs> because by the time September comes, I mean, there's going to be more things coming around. So who knows? Um, anyway, um... However, uh, today I'm going to review the movie that I saw on Saturday um, that was on Disney Plus because it did came out in theaters um, in June, which I mean at least it came out and um, despite the fact that it had a controversial and and um, it didn't do well as as they were hoping for, but at least it did came out in theaters. For sure, before it had to hit streaming, and it's going to hit on home video later. Um, it, it's the latest um, Disney and Pixar film, Lightyear. Yep, which is uh, the spinoff to the Toy Story uh, film franchise, because we have you know Toy Stories uh, one, two, three, and four, and I know this isn't the first time we ever got. A solo movie for Buzz Lightyear. There was a direct-to-video film that came out, and surprisingly enough, 22 years ago, <laughs> as I'm reviewing this, it's just amazing how this is happening. But they that alone became a TV series that followed, uh, which aired on both uh, ABC and UPN, if you remember that network. Uh, but they had a block called Disney's One Saturday Morning. And they had Disney's 1-2, so that means that they get to play the show on Saturday mornings while the rest will be on on Sundays and weekday mornings or afternoons. But I think it's mornings, mostly. Yeah, so that's really cool that they had to share it, so now they can finally play it um, any time. And it's such a shame that the show hasn't been on Disney Plus yet. I hope they will play it someday. I hope they added it though because I would love to watch it again. I haven't seen Buzz Lightyear of Star Command in a long time. The last time I saw that show it was on Toon Disney. And that was back in 2008. Yeah, that was the last time they played that series. And I can't believe that that was so long ago. And it's kind of hard to find the show at the moment unless I could try to find it online. If someone out there has episodes, I think that'd be nice to check it out. And I think I had tapes a few episodes here and there, but not as much. Because um, I remember it was on Channel 13, yeah, with the VPN. And I think I I did tape some on Toon Disney, I think. I don't know. But 
I, I probably only had a few episodes. I didn't have all of them. It's a shame. But come on, Disney Plus, pick that up. It would have been nice if they put it on Blu-ray. I mean, since they just put Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the movie didn't do very well at the box office, uh, sadly. Um, it, it actually grossed uh, 222 million worldwide out of its 200 million budgets. So they were still playing in the theaters for a little while, you know, through the course of two, a month and a half. Uh, they were lucky they played in Real D 3D, 4DX, Adobe Cinema, and IMAX formats. So that's really cool that they used those. Uh, so they had a chance. Um, but it was really nice to that this time we get a solo film that's not shared in, in the same universe um, as the, si the same fictional universe as they had with Toy Story, but this is a whole different discovery, but this is supposed to be based upon what Annie had saw when he was a kid. You know, it's like he, he actually saw his, his uh, very first film that's based upon the toy that he had as a gift because I'm sure he watches the show I mean when it came out and everything that happened <laughs> but because we all know about the story of Toy Story you know he you know he thinks he's a, he's a human as a space ranger instead of just a plastic toy that's what Woody was trying to uh, tell him exactly who he really is but he doesn't listen, and it kind of led to jealousy because Annie spends more time with Buzz than Woody. Because, you know, Woody was his favorite toy that he ever had. I mean, of course, he's joined in with all the other toys that he had, that he has. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> that he has. Um, but hey, I, I used to have a lot of toys when I was a kid, so you can lead to that. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry for the slip up. <laughs> yeah, I mean. But I, I know this had a controversial because of the scene uh, with uh, Buzz Lightyear's um, partner um, named uh, Isha Hartforn. Uh, yeah, Isha Hartforn, uh, who's his best friend and commanding officer, which we learned that. Um, she was engaged to uh, a female, so we learned that she's she's a lesbian, yeah, LGBT. That causes an uproar for everyone because they they felt like they weren't ready to see that for children who were watching a Pixar movie to see them kiss. I mean, everybody has to act so homophobic over something like that, and I understand what they're getting at, but at the same time. I just think it's really unfair that people can't even have a chance to to look things through in life. It's going to happen anyway, no matter what shape, size, or form. You know, no matter what race they are, no matter what gender they are, we're always going to have something like that. Yeah. Especially in an animated feature. So, they just really need to get used to this. Okay, I had no problem with that. Okay, I've seen a lot of movies and TV shows where they always have gays and lesbians, okay? They always kiss each other. They always hang around with each other here and there, okay? I mean, I was a kid when I watched these shows and movies, okay? I felt like it was odd at first because usually I do see males and females together often than just male and male or female to female but yeah, let's face it it's life people have their own choices they have their own risks they have their own will let them do whatever they want we don't need any more of this complaints so so there so yeah because certain countries wanted to ban this movie and that's unfair Okay, you know, good or bad or indifferent, I mean, they have the right to show what they have to show, okay? You know, 
it's unnecessary to censor everything. You know, that's why it's becoming such a problem. But if that's their own choice of will that they have to take, then so be it. Whatever. <sighs> Enough with that. Um, yeah, so this time, instead of getting Tim Allen to provide the voice, we got Chris Evans, uh, best known for playing Captain America, Steve Rogers, in all those Marvel movies, you know, the MCU. But of course, uh, he had played the Human Torch <laughs> in Fantastic Four from 2005, and I know he's done a lot of great movies uh, as we speak. Um, and he's an excellent actor, so I thought he really portrayed, you know, Buzz quite different compared to what Tim Allen was doing when he did the voice of him as a toy. So, so it kind of resembles that too. Like this is supposed to be a character that's more serious and understanding. So yes, there'll be some goofy humor in there too, but we want to be able to understand him. I mean, this is an origin story for him. So we want to be able to see what was it like from this character before he became, as we speak, the Space Ranger we all know. Because he was already a Space Ranger as we speak. We just wanted to make sure we want to see what was it like, you know, when he was taking the job. You know, helping out all of the Space Rangers around. And the fact that we learned that he had a best friend who was a female and black. And also we get to see some other characters that we never seen before. So this is before they became as we speak and before he went on to work with other partners and everything so I thought that was really refreshing that they went for it so and the fact that they got some very beautiful animation from Pixar and the fact that they're being shot this way in each angles that they have I mean this is exactly what we want to see in a movie like that so, so I'm really excited for it I just wish I'd seen it in theaters. But that's why I didn't have time to do anything much throughout the summer. But okay. <laughs> but anyway, let's begin with the review. Uh, it stars Chris Evans, K.K. Palmer, uh, Peter Son, Taka Watiti, you know, played Korg in the four movies. And I know he was in Jojo Rabbit, and recently he did Free Guy. <laughs> nice to see him. Uh, Dale Solas, uh, she was from the TV show Orange is the New Black from Netflix. Um, James Brolin, great actor. He's done a lot of great work in his career. Um, especially when he was in the movie The Goonies, and he went on to do a lot of great movies like... Um, um, North Country for Old Man, you know, the Corn Brothers film, and there's uh, many others. Uh, Uzu uh, Adaba, Mary McDonald Lewis, Isla Ritlock Jr., Angus McLean, who also directed this, uh, Bill Hader, and Efren Ramirez. It's written by Jason. Headley, along with Matthew Alrich, and it's uh, co-written and directed by Angus uh, McLean, who of course is the co-director of Finding Dory. The movie begins set in space uh, on a spaceship known as the Tune-Up, a Star Command exploration vessel. They're about to change courses into an unknown planet that displays the signs of life called the Tikani Prime where the entire crew of space rangers are already in hibernation only one has woken up and that turned out to be space ranger Buzz Lightyear of Star Command to infinity and beyond <laughs> who's joining in with his partner and commanding officer a black female named Isha Part form. They're about to scout the entire landing site to join in with a rookie named Federing Hamstan, who uh, 
Buzz uh, refused to, to disparage on working with him until they're being attacked by a variety of hostile life forms. You know, all these other creatures coming around. So the trio had to retreat as soon as they can to attempt their takeoff before the tune-up is being destroyed. So the escape trajectory is being compromised, resulting in a catastrophic engine damage causing the entire ship to crash just when he was trying to make it as soon as he can. So now they're being marooned on the planets with the entire crew evaporating and had to do all these constant repairs as they can so they can continue to go on their journey. But Buzz attempted to blame himself for this situation but was being cheered up by Isha by pointing out um, that they need someone to take all these insane risks by testing the replacement hyperspace crystal that they had created and developed to be able to leave and complete their mission to getting the entire crew home safely as soon as they can. So a year later, the crew has constructed a new colony along with the necessary infrastructure to conduct repairs around. Buzz decided to do an additional, an additional uh, test flights to see that he wanted to use the hyperspace crystals to see if maybe this could work perfectly. But of course, joining in with the, the virtual uh, voice activated assistant Ivan, which I know they use the, the autopilot. Uh, <laughs> he always keeps saying it autopilots that he refused to use. And cooperate with because he felt like he would rather just do this on his own but he has to do exactly as he commands them to do but the robot just keeps making all these mistakes yeah. so he always tells them what he's doing wrong and so on and so forth so anyway it became a near disaster because the compound by the realization of having to try to to go straight into the rings and, and fails to compromise by escaping the pod of, of the ship but he doesn't want to do that so he was trying to go straight into the rings and go back to the planet where he came from only to find out that the flight's effects have a time dilation so that means he, he went time traveling forward to only four years which passed on to the Tikani Prime and discovered that Isha had gotten engaged and this is the biggest surprise of them all was that she's engaged to a female scientist named Kiko so yes they're both lesbians yeah. LGBT and we also learned that she now has a son to take care of, which soon she'll, he'll grow up, gets promoted, gets married, and have a child of their own as a family. Which that's going to lead to the character as we speak named um, Izzy, who happens to be the granddaughter of Isha. Well, before we get to her, um, so he had to continue to go on with his other missions uh, to spend years, like over 62 years, by creating all these new crystal mixtures to get into, to hopefully to complete the entire mission so he doesn't make all these mistakes. Maybe he might try to get back to it, maybe go back in time to where he, he remains. Um, also, Isha had gave him a gift, which is a cap-shaped robotic therapist named Socks. It's an orange cat, and just like any other cat that we all know. And it's so cute, cuddly, and it's a meow and all. <laughs> but it was used to help him adjust, you know, being a man out of time. Try to see if, if this cat can fix everything that he chooses. You know, maybe to create the next hyperspace crystal to go on the next mission here and there 
And then we begin to see that time has passed. It's been 62 years. And now he has a new commanding officer named um, Carl uh, Burnside, who's a successor to Isha. Which, that's where things started to change because this was going to be his final test that he's going to take. And now they're going to develop some new changes going around in this entire colony. But he didn't want to deal with that. So, because now they're not letting him do any of this because now they want to go for new changes of his own. But he leaves the formula behind on a damaged computer, successfully fight to skip another 22 years in flight. So he's joining in with um, his cat's socks. So, because they just created the the hyperspace crystal, hoping that he'll be able to make it as soon as he can. And by the time he he made it to a different planet, though, which happens to be what it was, um, everything just seems to change, only to get worse. But now, or maybe get better, who knows. But now he meets Izzy, and he thought maybe it might be uh, Isha, but it wasn't. So now uh, Izzy has um, a crew of her own. He's joined by a fresh, naive, uh, clumsy recruit from the Colonel of Defense Forces named Mo Morrison, along with an elderly Perel convict um, that named uh, Darby Steele. So they join together only to be captured by a bunch of robots who are about to steal you know, the crystal or anything else involved. It also was ready to prison the entire uh, crew, as we speak, only to be attacked by Emperor Zerg. And there is a secret behind Zerg, which I'm not going to give away it was best not to, but I had to say it's a very shocking surprise, as, we, as it turns out. So, of course, Zerg was sent out all the robots to go after them, and they're about to escape. They're being captured. Then they found that this ship actually has all the Space Ranger suits that they had to use in order to escape from all these bugs around. Yeah, there was a lot of bugs attacking them. And they're hoping that they give them some time. These suits that they were wearing, uh, they can actually, uh, because he, he also remembers all the, the forms that he has when, when wearing those suits, that they have the invisible mode on these buttons. They have all these other um, buttons to use too, in case they need it. And of course, they also have the laser, too, that they can shoot. And they also have, you know, all the equipment they that they need. They, they can even fly if they have wings and all that. So they're about to escape uh, through the, the ship, get away from these bugs, and get away from these robots, and get away from Zerg. But that let... But then we want to get to know these characters as soon as they can, so that way Buds can finally get back home. And maybe, hopefully, they'll find a way to help them out. Or maybe he didn't, or he wasn't so sure if he wanted to help them out, period. But he just wanted to get back to where his own time uh, with socks. But, but that's going to be pretty difficult for him to do. And also explains about how uh, Mo has always been so clumsy and how he makes all these mistakes. It kind of led to how it kind of led a situation with Buzz because he had to remember that. And all, all everything that was going around and how he still remembers uh, Isha. And the fact that his grand that uh, he would be proud of Izzy if he'd be able to work together. We also learned that Izzy is afraid of um, of heights. Yeah, she has a phobia. I mean, especially when she has to go um, on space too. So she almost had trouble trying 
to get pa go straight into the ship of Zerg again when Buzz got captured. I just when they're about to escape as soon as they can and also try to save the the, the hyper crystal um, to be able so they'll be able to use it enough to go back to his own time. Yeah, and so on and so forth. So it was up to them to to save Buzz and and also try to stop Zerg, and hopefully Buzz will be able to save them too by trying to get back to the planets where they're from. Um, which then enough to stop Zerg, and then now he can finally. Which he wanted to go back, but then he realized, you know, maybe it's best to, to stay with them. Hoping to find a new journey ahead of them. You know, what's so now <laughs> they became um, the Space Ranger Corps. I mean, reject was Buzz accepts, basically rejects uh, the offer that Burnside was going for, you know, to work together. So now they want to be able to be what they've been waiting for for a long time. So now Buzz. And his crew will be able to work together as a team to set off on a new journey. There we go. And it's a very enjoyable movie. I, as a solo film, it, it's uh, very incredible. Uh, the animation is terrific. Um, no matter how you see the film in 3D, at the time, it, it, for those who have a chance to see it in theaters, which it's not playing anymore, but... For those who actually had a chance, I mean, I, I'm sure you actually had a terrific time and not get bothered by, you know, the controversy going around on the internet or any other that they got to see and view the film. For those who have a chance, I mean, despite the fact that we also had to deal with the pandemic going around. But it was nice that Pixar finally released this, you know, after... The last three Pixar films that was only available on Disney Plus, but one of them have been played in theaters though too, which was uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. So I got to see that in theaters uh, last year. So technically, um, they were playing in selected theaters and and streaming at the same time. Um, but anyway. But it was just nice that they finally played it in theaters before they were going to go straight to Disney Plus. Okay, but, but you get the idea. But I thought the the performances uh, provided the voices very well. I mean, Chris Evans did a tremendous job uh, portraying as Buzz Lightyear. Sounds a little different than what Tim Allen did. Hey, but you know, Patrick Warburton got to do the voice of Buzz Lightyear in the TV series, so I know he sounded different compared to Tim Allen when he provided the voice, but that's that's all right. But when Chris Evans uh, did his uh, for the solo film, I, it almost matches, but it does have a little bit of a change, a bit on the side. But I think he's supposed to be as young as as he was going to be, more heroic and strong, just terrific as a, as a leader. So I thought he captured it very well, too. Um, and the rest of the actors, uh, K.K. Palmer um, was just uh, perfect as Izzy. And you know, the granddaughter is trying her best to, to um, try to make Isha very proud. Just proves that you know, no matter what she can do, you know, she can, it always takes a lot of risk. Even she had made her mistakes too, so we learned about that. Um, but it's great that she gets to help out with the crew and all. Um, Taka Watiti um, was hilarious as Mo Morrison. I mean, yes, he's a clumsy fool, but no matter what he does, he's just doing it again. <laughs> um, I mean, I like the scene where he always has the pen, too. Yeah, like, he loves to use the pen. Because, after all, the pen is mightier than the sword. No. Um, and Darby Steele, uh, voiced by Dale Souls, is just also 
<laughs> courageous and, and just hilarious and also <laughs> just, just acts like what all these uh, comics would act to. <laughs> I mean, he, she was tough, but at least she's just doing what she can to help everyone out. <laughs> uh, James Brolin uh, provided the voice of Zurich uh, perfectly, as we, because you know he is a ruthless warlord. I mean, you know, um, but it has a dark secret behind that. I mean, this is our. Darth Vader, as we speak. <laughs> um, and uh, Azu uh, Adaba as Nisha Hawthorne is uh, exhilarating as uh, Buzz's best friend and commanding officer. You know, she was like um, his mentor. And she helps things out for him you know, in case he makes these mistakes. But, you know, we all make mistakes too. That's that's the purpose of the story. Is that no matter how strong and heroic you are, people are bound to make mistakes all the time. It, it, I mean, in, in in a way, Buzz Lightyear was like an outcast. Let's let's put it this way. I'm always favored with the characters you know who are outcasts. They never give up. They never surrender. I mean, yes, they failed at times. They feel bad for themselves, but no matter what, I mean, they, they thought they were going to quit. At least that's what we expected, but but you know what? They'll never give up. They'll try and try again, hoping to get things right. And that's the purpose of the story. Okay, it's not about, you know, her friend. It's not about his friend, you know, you know, falling in love with a female or any other, with all the kissing and, and all that, or or him, you know, with his cat, or the fact that he spends time, you know, trying to, even though he wants to go to his next mission and all that. It's just about, you know, human emotions. You know, whatever you do, no matter how hard you try, you're always going to try to succeed. I mean, even if you failed, you're still going to be um, the best Space Ranger ever for the entire Star Command. And that's the story for it. And also, I think this really would help for for Andy's sake to, to grow up for a TV series and a movie like this that's where he became... The child fantasy that he would ever have to own himself a toy version of Buzz Lightyear. And I think it really helps for, for Toy Story. Uh, I know they were gonna, they might be able to do like a, a solo film for Woody though. I would love to see that. I'm sure they're gonna come up with something fresh. But I'm, no matter what, Disney has always you know, taken a lot of risks. And so is Pixar. I mean, I know things are different without John Lasseter, but we still have the original founders around, and they have all the other people still working at Pixar, so they're doing what they can to take their their next step in animation. We were lucky enough to have films like Turning Red, Soul, and even Luca, for that matter, and, and we have Raya and... And even though, yeah, because those were the Pixar films we had. And the last Pixar film was Onward, that did came out in theaters before the pandemic occurred. Uh, Raya and the Last Dragon was from Disney, by the way. Sorry, I, I was almost, I kind of, because they're all different in between here. But this had a lot of hearts and soul that were put into it. There was nothing wrong with the film. It doesn't deserve a 5.7 on IMDb because of this controversy that was going around. I think people really need to see the film and just see it with an open mind and just watch it as a great movie. That's exactly what these people should be doing. 
instead of having to spend all this time going on the internet, going on social media, and looking at all the buzz news that we're going for, having to deal with all these clickbait articles here and there that's just blinded by by every audience around that just make them look like like total fools. And this is what we have to go for nowadays, folks. And I am sick and tired of it. Believe me. Okay? We, we just need to go out more, touch some grass, and just have the best time of your lives, okay? I mean, I know we have to take the risk to go out and having to wear a mask and having to be vaccinated. But no matter what we do, we want to be able to live our lives for the next outcome. That's what's important. Anyway. But still, I think it's a, it's a great movie. It deserves a lot of credit. It deserves a lot more than its controversy and everything that went around it. Okay? Because no matter what they do, no matter how hard they try, Pixar will always live and live long. Same goes with Disney. I mean, even with all the struggles they've been going through, even though they've been buying out a lot of uh, companies, you know, all this uh, conglomerate uh, mergers, I mean, other studios are doing the same thing for this next century, next generation. I mean, I, I hope... You know, they'll continue to make more movies and more shows and more everything. Even if they have to be on streaming, cable, and in theaters. And also physical media, too. We need more. It's more for your buck. So anyway, that's uh, Lightyear. Which is a fascinating story, as it turned out, as a solo film. Excellent animation. Uh, with the IMAX enhanced, if you had to watch it on Disney Plus, that changes all these frames and all that, and all this other stuff that they added into it, and all the characters that you enjoy. I mean, I even enjoyed the the cat named Socks, which was very cute. I mean, <laughs> um, yes, there was also a secret too about the worn out version, <laughs> but it was it was nice um, to have a robotic cat. You know, for assistance to help things out for Buzz. So, and of course, you get <laughs> Ivan, too. And then all these other characters the, the Cyclops, those robots, and all these other, <laughs> other characters. Of the book. Anyway, so that's Lightyear, and I give the film four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye. To infinity and beyond!